Hey, welcome back to the Give Me Liberty podcast, special edition right here at CPAC 2023. We're having capital conversations on the ground, and I am with my friend, Father Frank Pavone, who is the National Director of Priest for Life. Father Frank, thanks hey, for Ryan, joining us. It's good to be here, and especially to be here at CPAC. Yes. This is always so energizing. It is. I, I'm always thankful to see actual conservatives, right? Yes. At a conservative political action committee meeting. So you're you're on the grounds here and uh tell us a little bit. You were we were talking a little bit off camera before we got started, but yes. what, some of the things that you're doing right now. Yes, you know, we just had a fantastic meeting at our Priest for Life headquarters of national pro life leaders. We do these leadership meetings quarterly. And I've been doing them for, you know, three decades. But th this one was a three-day strategy meeting. And I wanted to uh, mention it because while we're here at CPAC, I'm talking with a lot of the leaders, okay, including uh, elected representatives and some of the members of Congress, some of the political people, about what these leaders came to a consensus about. Because it's important because it intersects with the 2024 election and it intersects with the legislative agenda of Congress. Essentially, a point A, abortion is not a losing issue politically. It's a winning issue. We're concerned that some candidates are running away from the issue. They're afraid. Hey, listen, we just reversed Roe v. Wade. This is no time to be running away from the issue. This is a time to press in even harder. And, uh, and, then, and then point B is when it comes to legislation, the role of the Congress has not gone away. We need federal legislation, not just that, for example, as the vote is about to happen in Congress, uh, would take away funding from abortion. We've got to go deeper than that and actually protect the babies by law. Now, where that gestational line will be drawn, well, that depends on where most members of Congress are willing to draw it. But the point is, we've got to actually start protecting them with gestational limits rather than simply uh, defund the abortion industry. So, very, very important there, and I, I appreciate you saying that this is an actual winning issue. I fully agree with that, and it's not that I have some Gallup science poll out there, data poll. By the way, I think a lot of the the uh, books are cooked on those type those types of things. I don't. I, I wonder how their sampling is actually working. But the conviction that I have in my heart is that when I look at the youngest generation, and I even look at the oldest generation, I see an older generation with a lot of regrets. I see a younger generation that absolutely is convinced by the science that that, that being in the womb is an actual baby. They're convinced formed. by the science. Their own first pictures are yes, ultrasound, that's right, exactly when they were right. in the womb. There's another thing they experience, the younger uh, 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 people in our, in, our, in our society, and that is they're survivors of abortion, and they have the sense— that this has harmed me, even though, you know, I, obviously I wasn't aborted, although there are some who have survived abortions, but, but it's hurt them in a different way. It's hurt them in the sense that what does it do to a young person to realize, you know what, when I was in the womb, I wasn't considered a person. I wasn't protected. I could have been legally aborted. Uh, that hurts. And that hurts in ways that we haven't fully begun to understand. But this is one of the reasons why there's so much young participation in the pro-life movement and why there is so much pro-life voting, because they're saying, I'm speaking up for myself here. I was a person then, like I'm a person now, I should have been protected, therefore I want to protect the babies that are in that position today. Amen. Uh, I, I want to go back to something else too, and that is how to speak strength just to Christians, to churches, in the evangelical world, Catholic world, you name it. Um, why we you you had to pay a, a cost for that you had to pay a price yes, for this yes and I think that there are some who genuflect to the culture and they they think oh you know I, I don't want to go too strongly on this for example I'll, I'll go back to something that happened back in June of 2022 uh, when the Dobbs decision was coming uh, there were some. Uh, evangelical personalities that were saying, we don't want to spike the football on this. You know, even though this great victory at the Supreme Court, we don't want to say too much about abortion because we got to care. We have this care and concern for how people might react to that in our community. So there was already people that were um, sort of dancing around the issue back in as far back as, in, as June uh, on something that we should have all been unapologetic and bold and f with full conviction uh, why? Because we're talking about 
life and death. We're talking about life and death in the womb, and we absolutely are for the baby. So how do you speak strength maybe to those who are, uh, that feel like they're back on their heels? You know, this is no time for feeling that way at all. What the Supreme Court has done is leveled the playing field. It's taken away this fake right to abortion that we were told was there for the last 50 years, but was never there before in all American history. And now we have a better strength for our arguments than ever. What do I mean? When you stand up and say, the baby is a real baby. You look at the science. Abortion is harmful. Again, you look at the science of how it harms the mother. Um, you look at all this, and when we made these arguments under Roe, the other side would shut down all discussion by simply asserting, oh, but it's a constitutional right. And a lot of people would shut up because, like, who wants to speak against the constitutional right? They can't say that anymore. And now what the other side is forced to do is to defend abortion on its merits. You tell us why it's a good thing to dismember these babies. You tell us why it's a good thing to withdraw protection from these verifiably human lives. Tell us why it's a good thing. They don't have any arguments, but now they're forced to try to make them. And so why would we retreat from that? Why, why, now's the time to speak up even louder. Now's the time to, to reach out even harder to those that are, that are tempted to have abortions because a lot of them are going to run into now the roadblock of the law. This, their state is going to say, as, as over a dozen states say now throughout pregnancy, no, 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 you can't have an abortion. Okay, so what do I do next? Most of these women are not willing to break the law, so they're going to find another way. We are obviously there to help them find another way, but, but that need is greater than ever. So now's the time again to speak up louder. It's never been easier to save a life. It's never been easier to make the case for saving a life. It's never been easier to defeat abortion. And then we have people doing, like you said, running away, being quiet, being afraid not to rock the boat. That's always been inappropriate, but now it's more inappropriate than ever. Yeah, we, we have to speak strength and boldness in this time. We have to be unapologetic. Young people are, are, are attracted, and I think magnetized, to courage. You know, when you see courage in people who are standing up and speaking truth clearly, unapologetically, yes. with full conviction, young people will rally to that banner. Um, in, in just these final moments, uh, what do you see coming down in 2023, maybe across the nation as you look at legislation? Yes. You look at, what, what's, what's happening? Ohio. Okay. One place to focus. There are going to be a lot of states like this. But there's a battle brewing in Ohio for 2023 where the pro-abortion people are trying to get into the Constitution by ballot initiative, unlimited abortion. They did this in Michigan, in California, in a number of other states, they want to do it in more states. Now, notice, they're trying to put back what Dobbs took away. Yes. Dobbs said no right to abortion in the federal constitution. So these people are saying, oh, well, let's put it in the state constitution. Our audience needs to understand that's a cowardly act because they don't want to have that public legislative debate that would require, like we were just saying, the other side to actually make a case for abortion on the merits they don't have a case, therefore they want to hide behind the robes of the justices, the judges, and the state constitutions, not the mind and will of the people and their elected representatives, which is where Dobbs squarely put the abortion issue once again. So we're in a situation here where people need to step up to the plate in their state battles. Ohio, South Dakota has a battle going on right now. There's a lot of work to be done. We've got to counteract what the other side is doing. And back to that leadership meeting we just had of the national leaders together at our headquarters, they resolved that the national groups are going to unite more to help each state in these state battles. In other words, every state battle is a national battle. We need to treat it that way. So even if folks are not from Ohio, we need to help Ohio. We need to help South Dakota. We need to help all 50 states. Awesome. Father Frank Pravone, National Director of Priests for Life, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Thanks.